Hey, welcome back to the Gadget Spot. I don't Hi. want to tattle, but I did hear Jaren's uh, chair click a little bit in that five seconds of silence. That was I thought, me. I thought you said you didn't want to tattle. My well, chairs don't click. Want to, but I did. The only thing clicky about Jaren is his keyboard. You kidding me? I'm not touching it. Oh. But when you do, it clicks. Yeah. I'd say this is a good yeah. start so far. We did good. Magical. We did good, guys. All right, this is the gadget spot where we talk about tech gadgets and video games. Lately, yeah. we've been a little video game heavy, but that's all right because there's this this episode we're going to be a little video game heavy too because there's some cool stuff that got shown off this last week. Next week yeah, will be the week works. of Apple. This is the week of video games. Yep. Uh, let's go ahead and introduce the panel here. We got uh, we got uh, Kablowin. Owen. Hey. Owen. I was looking at I was looking at James on the. Uh, on the on the Zoom meeting, and I'm just like, we don't start with James, though. Why am I looking at? <laughs> <laughs> so we're just we're sitting well. In hello, order this week. Hey, I heard my echo there. It stu- It did it again. What the frick? Uh, what? Oh, now I'm it hearing just, an, Now it I'm just not, switched back. I'm it's not hearing an good. echo. I don't hear an echo. It's t- it's Tony's speakers. They're haunted. Well, now you can hear it twice. Then twice the goodness. You can follow me on Twitter at Technoan. That's just my Twitter him. handle. That's my. Twitter handles, and it's Twice. a good one. Is it yeah, been, uh, yeah, go, go, Jaren, go, Jaren. While Tony's oh. doing that, yeah. Notice how when Tony is out for like two seconds, everything just falls apart. Yeah, um, yeah. Go this Jane. this is Jaren. You can find me on Twitter at Jaren, J A R R O N. Yeah, that's right. My I got my first name on Twitter. I'm I'm cool. Look at this guy. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go find. I'm gonna go see if I can find Owen. At Owen and see if they'll let me buy it for twenty five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, doubtful. Somebody That's... offered me a hundred dollars for mine once. Not worth it. No, maybe I'll. Ooh, you know what? I was recently able to transfer all of my BAT out of my Brave browser for twenty one dollars. Maybe they'll want a hundred Brave tokens. Not knowing what it's actually worth. Yeah. Ah, oh. Now you're talking. So I'm talking. Oh, yeah. you're talking about Bluetooth for a second. No. If they're named, if their name's Owen, they they might like crypto. It hurts my heart, but you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, James, introduce yourself. What's up? I'm James. Uh, you could have caught me on Twitter at JDD Jensen, but. I've since deleted all social media apps except for uh, Reddit from my phone because wow, isn't Reddit the I problem? Was wasting so much time. Well, I, yeah, thought, it, I thought Reddit was the problem one. Yeah, that's the crux of the problem. But I can't. <laughs> I, I can quit whatever I want. I yeah. So, so you deleted the ones that you actually weren't addicted to, but you kept the one you were addicted to. Get closer to your mic when you speak, there, James. Like this? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we can really hear. Jaron is not that. wrong. <laughs> uh, but um okay. you can you i mean if you want to tweet me there inevitably when i hop back on um you can catch me there jdd jensen uh or didn't you just tweet yesterday i did yeah. i yeah, tweeted I and it. then i deleted it as soon as i tweeted it i don't remember what i tweeted oh well uh, um yeah, neither do honestly I. it's probably not worth it half the crap that i say dude i'm i don't know what i'm talking about half the time so like whatever like, isn't, that, isn't that all of us though i mean come on mm-hmm. uh, yeah yeah it's just a world of opinions um i think we should trust news but at the same time it shouldn't really be called news anymore it should be called opinion but we're not getting into that so um you can catch me on video games uh literally any platform i'm trying to transform uh, JDD Jensen to funeral taters, and usually it's capital F, capital T, no spaces. F U N E R A L T A T E R S. Catch me everywhere, especially Warzone and Grand Theft Auto, which I am addicted to both. I'm I'm not proud to say, but at least I'm saying it. Grand Theft Auto, that's new. Yeah, it was free on the Epic Store, but we'll talk about that later. Also, we have a host. His name's Tony. Hey, check me out on Twitter. At Quad T Tony or on the Geek Show podcast, and uh, yeah, that's it there. All right, we need to give a Nailed shout out. It. We need to and love to give a shout out to our Patreon backers because they keep this train rolling, uh, keeping us supplied with uh, tips and whatnot uh, of the monetary kind, so that we can have the equipment we need and the hosting fees paid. Yes, and it's like a digital tip jar. If you want to donate, and if you donate $6 or more, we read your name on the show. So uh, go to patreon.com forward slash gadgetspot, 
uh, if you wish to proceed. So here we go with the shout outs. Big thank you to AJ Jasper, David Roshinsky, and Austin Beauregard, and Aaron Young. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you. You guys Josh, rock. Josh Dorius, Brian J. Vander Zawin III, Aaron Langford, Crod Gilbert, Dick Messerly, Splinter, Hardware, Adam Hecht, Ryan Baker, Aaron Faulkner, Joe. Yeah, that's new. It's just Joe now. I like it. Adam Foot. <laughs> I wonder what Tom thinks of Jaren's Fabio-esque flowing locks. Ryan, Michael Beck, Wiffleball Tony, Conrad Southworth, Matthew Bailey, V for Valentine, and Twyman. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Patreon backers. You are the best. Uh, all right. Also, shout out to BioBidet. Go to BioBidet.com if you want to clean your butt with water, which you should because it's cleaner. So much better. Yeah. And uh, use code GadgetSpot for 10% off. It kind of makes you feel like a, a kid again. You yeah. know, you, you don't get those weird chafing issues anymore. And at least I don't. I don't know. I mean, about there's you. not well, a lot of positives to post 30, but this is one of them. Yeah. No, you, it know, is. That, you know that whole uh, toilet paper hoarding thing that apparently happened? What? I, I, know about yeah. I don't remember I that. Yeah. I don't even remember it. It's because it yes. didn't affect us with bidets. Mm-hmm. I mean, it affected me because my kids learned to use a bidet, and that was tra- That was that was <laughs> that was scarring. If you wanna, but, if you yeah, if you wanna figure out how to use a bidet, just do what I did. Grab any kind of melon that has a hole in the center of it, half it, and then just use it as like a catcher's mitt. How does that? It. How does that teach you how to use a bidet? I don't know. That makes <laughs> I absolutely realized after no I sense. Said that, that does it doesn't make any sense. No. <laughs> I mean, I did it. Maybe you want to if you practice a toilet. Oh, so like, so like you, you spray the bidet on the melon as a test. Yeah, you use the the melon as a catcher's mitt. You don't you don't cut the melon in half and then pee into it, but or or go to the bathroom because the catcher's mitt. What are you catching exactly? So, (laughs) but then then you get melon juice all over your toilet and it'll look like kind of like blood and it would make me faint. I don't like how you say melon juice. <laughs> Are you a little quiet, James? Yeah, I, no. I, I put in the big notes. Turn your mic up a bit. I put it in extra large letters. He, he didn't see it. Really? Yeah, in the it's, show notes. I'm looking at the show notes. Uh, right there. Right. How's that? That's a little better. Yeah. No, actually, it sounds the same. Yeah, Dang exactly it. the same. Turn it up in Windows. Uh, all right, we have some emails too, right? <laughs> we, yeah, do we do indeed. Yeah. Who, who wants to I go got, first? I, I'll go. I'll go. I'll, I'll, no, I'll go I, first, then Owen okay. in the middle. Have an Owen okay. sandwich. Yeah, That's Owen a, sandwich. Oh, if you need me to read something, I can read something. Ah, if, you it, sound better. If if I did all three, it would be like a bread sandwich, and that's no good. Yeah. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. All right, we, we got like one. Put me we got one middle. from... Yeah, in the middle. <laughs> we got one from David Slaughter. I love that last name. That's hey, guys. Rad. He, sounds like, he sounds like a superhero. I David know, yeah. Slaughter. But like an anti-hero. Yeah. Like that's cool. He says, hey, guys, I have been meaning to weigh in on multiple items, but have been lazy to email until now. He sounds like one of us. He does indeed. Yes. Yeah. First, the bidet is excellent. My whole house will be equipped soon. Oh, nice. Yes. Second, nice. for baby monitors, we caught the Le Fun motorized camera. Or we bought the Le Fun motorized camera. It has been great for three years. At three, $30, you can't beat the price. The app is not super great, but for the price, it was perfect. Le Fun, I've never heard of that. I'll have to check Neither that out. Neither Pretty good price. Third, Sam's Club has a return policy that is as good as Costco. Hey. I, bought a, I bought a Vizio 60-inch M-Series that I had to return three times. Sounds like Vizio to me. Twice for glitches hey. on the hardware. I would not recommend it. And once because my son threw a toy at it and broke the LCD. That's amazing. And they that, took it back? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Doesn't finally, work anymore. Hmm. I finally <laughs> landed on a Magnavox with the built-in Roku. The software is great. It is even better for gaming and being a cord cutter. I love that you can pause antenna TV with the addition of a flash drive. I didn't know you could do that. That's, That's pretty really cool. cool. That's way cool. Nice. You know, all, all those smaller manufacturers should just put Roku on their TVs. They really, I mean, yeah. yeah. It's totally worth it. Whatever they pay in licensing instead of trying to develop their own janky app. Yeah. Which is always slow and painful. Yep. Vizio. Even, well, even, the, Vizio even, the big, even the big names can't make a good one. Yeah. Sony's is pretty janky. Yeah. Vizio's is pretty janky. Samsung's is really janky. Can confirm. I like Samsung's better than Vizio's. I have a Samsung and a Vizio, personally. Hmm. Um, fourth, an interesting tech tip I picked up while dealing with my crappy Comcast supplied router. 
Plug your router into a smart plug and set it to turn off and reboot your router in the middle of the night periodically. Oh. I have mine set to reboot twice a week. Works great. I actually do the same thing. In my Asus Merlin firmware, there's actually a setting within the firmware itself to reboot your router. And I do it every single night, and it's been it's been gravy ever since. And so some firm, some firmwares might support that. So first check your firmware router, your router firmware, whoa, uh, to see if that option's there. And if not, this is a this is an excellent hack. It's I, I'd recommend that to anyone. Um, lastly, I also have a split level house that is difficult to cool. I resolved this by getting a room size air conditioner for my bedroom upstairs and setting the thermostat to keep the uh, min level comfortable. I bought a Cielo, which is designed with an IR blaster that delivers smart controls to an otherwise dumb air unit via the remote control inputs. IR blaster. It's yeah. room sized. That is huge. <laughs> Um, Cielo, that, that's, I've never heard of that gadget before. That's, that sounds cool. So it sounds like it, it's an IR blaster, which, with, uh, which can hook up to your phone. Um, I can set it oh. on a schedule or to maintain a temp like a thermostat. Thanks for the great show, David. Oh, well, thanks for writing in, David. I, those I are, those like are some good tips. I, yeah. I like that email. I need Plus. to get that. I need to do that air conditioner one and then like find a way to hack it onto one of those nest sensors, you know? Yeah. That's what I need to do. Cause I like, I'm too addicted. I'm too addicted to the nest controls and on my phone and all that stuff. Now, when you say you're addicted to them, could you stop if you actually wanted to and go back to a high mm. mm -mm. mm. No, I just, I just wouldn't be happy. Did you install tomato on it? Yeah. <laughs> it's pronounced tomato. Okay. Well, Let's we're call the in whole America. Thing it's pronounced Imperial <laughs> system. So yeah. Why don't you go grab some Basel, put it in your boot and get the heck out of here. Okay. Basel. All right. This next one's from Ad Anthony Adamson. <gasps> Do we know him? No. no okay. No, no, I thought you, I thought you were going to say you knew him. It sounds right. like a superhero though. Cause it has yeah. the alliteration. Alliteration. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Hey, get, Hey, Hey, Gadget Spot, my name is Tony, but only an average height model, not the too tall variety. <laughs> oh, I've been listening to you guys. I've been thing. listening to you guys for uh, about a year now, and you are part of my weekly routine. Keep up Aww. the good work. Love nice. you guys. Yeah. Cool. Um, which which one's your favorite, Tony? <laughs> don't don't ask. Come on, Tony. It's probably, no. it's probably too tall, no. Tony. Come on, tell me, Tony. Yeah. All probably. right. He has a question. He has a question. He says. My question is about gaming in a different room than where the PC is located. Mm. My my tower is in a spare bedroom just off my theater room where I have my projector and surround sound set up. I typically play Destiny 2 and it's an Assassin's Creed Odyssey on my PC with an Xbox con Xbox controller and would like to play them on the projector. The problem I'm having is laggy controls when the controller is connected via Bluetooth to my Xbox USB adapter in the other room. Sometimes it will even drop the connection completely. Where I sit in the theater is roughly 30 feet from the PC, but also directly in line of sight to the tower if I leave the door open. How many have any of you ever dealt with this or maybe have some ideas for any solutions to make this as seamless and smooth as possible without breaking the bank and building a separate computer? Thanks in advance for any help or ideas you guys have for keeping me entertained every week. Tony. So I've, I've thought about this and I did some research and there's really not much you can do when it well, comes to Bluetooth, um, especially an Xbox controller. And maybe Tony, you have a different answer to me, but my thought was it's not exactly seamless, but you can get a USB extension cable. Hey, and, that's what I was thinking. Of. And mm -hmm. only extend it when you need it. So um, 10 feet is the maximum length before the connection starts to degrade. However, with such low bandwidth from a Xbox controller, I don't think you'd have a problem going bigger than that, going 15, maybe even 20. And then I would just unroll it when you need it and then put it, roll it back yep. up and you're done. How far away did he say the, uh, 30 the rooms feet. are? 30, 30 feet. So yeah. there is there just one wall in between or, or um, what? He said it was line of sight. Yeah. Line of so, sight in the same room? Yeah, so it's probably big like... Well, like no, the basement. spare room is, he said it was to the side and it sounds like... Um, that's feeding the projector probably through long cables. It's sounding like. Yeah. So um, I, I was going to say you could, uh, do what Jaron said, except get a long USB cable and just feed it through with the, uh, cables you already have run and then plug the, uh, Bluetooth adapter at the end of that, uh, USB extension cable uh -huh. and just have it sitting there by the projector. 
right? Yeah, well, it sounds like it'd be a long cable run. Um, you can get if, a you can if get that's a, the a sorry, power you get a powered USB extension cable. Yeah, that's that's what I was going to say. Yeah. So instead of a passive cable, get an active USB extension cable. Yep, and you can run it pretty much any length you want. And so, that'd, be, that'd be seamless if you ran the cable. Yeah, that's what I would do. I would just run the cable with the other cables and uh, just have it pop out there. And you can just dangle your dongle right there. Hmm. Hmm. Tony knows all about that. That's a, that's a very smooth that's, transition. I, I that's appreciate That's a fun that. alliteration. Sometimes you got to <laughs> dangle your dongle. Mm-hmm. Know what I mean? We got one more very rude email from Joe Reedy. Ooh. Um, <laughs> but he, he it, it's okay though because I, I feel like he's built up enough goodwill over the years that you know I, I, I can take it from him. Is he gonna, he's he's going to use all of his goodwill right now. <laughs> he says, I "Dear Jaron, are you as excited as I am that they announced a new console without releasing another Uncharted game that you'll feel obligated to beat? <laughs> Uncharted is a." <laughs> The laughs over with. <laughs> Wait, there's more. Un- Uncharted is a bit of a dead horse. Also, they announced a remastering of Demon Souls. It's a bit of a dead horse as well. I was going to no say, one... there's five other Demon Souls style games from the same developers. So, But no one is worried about you beating that one. That's true. I will never beat that one. It's like the PS5 is calling my name. Love forever and always, Joe. <laughs> I you actually met up with Joe this week. He's a good guy. I like that guy. What? what? Oh, fun. Yeah. We stayed six feet apart. Cool. Cool. See the, the end of that story. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> thanks, James. We have opinions of the PS5 announcement. We'll get into that yeah, later. Yeah, we're going to get into that. Um, and I, I am saddened there is no Uncharted game that I would be compelled to beat. Pretty sure it's had, just Had they announced in... one, they would have they would have had my purchase day one. I, th- I think they're just in talks with the Nathan Fillion. You know, they just got to figure out that, get him on board oh. or whatever. Do you think they're waiting to, Nathan for that Fillion? at all? Nathan Fillion, why? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, because he'd be it, perfect as an older Tom Drake. Holland, man. I know. We're not. Wanna... We're, talk, we're talking about video games, not movies. <laughs> no, no. It's yeah. Okay. I just, I just, I, I sometimes go and watch that, um, that, oh, the that clip they made. Minute short. Mm-hmm. Oh, that mm-hmm. was awesome. Yeah, it I was go, so I, good. It was so good that I've, I've watched it multiple times. I'm not gonna yeah, lie. Yeah, it was high quality. Yeah, yeah they, need... they, they, they nailed it perfectly. Oh man. Yeah. If you haven't seen that, just Google it on YouTube. Nathan Fillion as Nathan Drake. Do you, think, do you think Nathan Fillion ever plays Uncharted and then just touches the screen every now and then? He's like, "That's me. That's that could me be me. Right that there. could be me right there. I could, I could wear that <laughs> scarf. It's an ascot, but it's a scarf. Tuck in your shirt halfway on one side. Yeah, <laughs> you know how he I does am, it. I am Nathan. All right, uh, let's uh, let's roll into some uh, sweet sweet news. We got yes. going from this Sweet. week. Um, yes. Speaking of rolling, Tony. Oh, does that does that go into something you want to talk guess about? Guess what's not going to be rolling and on four legs. That was the worst transition I've ever heard. I have a pitch for the thrifty fifty for gadget spot, but it's going to take a little bit more than just fifty dollars. <laughs> you mean it's going to take seventy four thousand dollars? Yeah, the thrifty seventy five k. We could get a dog <laughs> together. And Let's get unlike, the robot. Ooh. Any other newlywed couple, we will continue to love our dog after we have kids. Oh, Forever. the Boston Dynamics dog? Yeah. Yep. They're oh, finally, yeah. finally licensing it out. Finally and they're desperate enough. Their software and hardware ripped off within a week and a half after selling it. And sounds it's not going to be worth as much. <laughs> sounds about right. It looked like uh, MKBHD bought one from the... Uh, Serious? <laughs> from the, uh, uh, the picture he tweeted out. Yeah. So... Do you ever think people like that open something like that up for licensing and like some random place that's like a rival, like they see the uh, order being placed and they're like, maybe we're not going to sell it to them. Well, I mean, if they're going to copy stuff off of it, they have to copy it in a way that seems original because there's patents and intellectual properties and all that kind of stuff that's there. Unless you're buying it, you know, in China. That's what I was going to say, but I didn't want to say it. <laughs> they don't give a I'll crap. Wait. I'll wait for no. that version. They don't. They don't, <laughs> they don't give a care about. They don't, they don't give a care about your IPs and your patents. No, isn't it nope. legally? Isn't it like legally there? Like the, if you want to do business there, you give up the patents and IP. It, it, right. It's the government they, owns yeah. them. Yeah. The way that I've had it explained to me, it's like it's like. Um, oh shoot! How do they say it? 
something something uh, social media you don't have any privacy anymore or something something it's like that something that was very eloquent mod oh, pouch that one together i drank a gallon of water today okay i have been peeing like a racehorse and i cannot think straight <laughs> Hmm. How do those correlate? Oh my gosh! I feel like my well, you brain said you couldn't is think straight. Come on, hanging in just gelatin, man. Like, have you guys ever drank a gallon of water before? Nope. Yep. Uh, uh, I can't remember. Maybe. I'm lucky it's if I so push eight water. ounces. You're supposed to drink at least your body weight in ounces or half ounces. So, like, no, I weigh. Yeah, that's, that's not true. You just got to suck the pee back into pounds. your body. No, you think it's not true? I googled it, and it is true, Tony. It is true. It very it varies from person to person. There's no the, set amount of water you're supposed to drink. The internet no, 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 does the, not lie, that's what Tony. I'm saying. It's, it's your it's your body weight. No, I don't mean base. There's Pull no form. There's no formula. It's never lied. Okay, you're right. Wikipedia is always true. You're welcome. You got you me just, there. Did you just edit that to make that true? <laughs> Edited by James Jensen. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't show cases like that, does it? Though? Uh, yep. So, seventy five k for that uh, for that Boston Dynamics. Uh, what are the, do they have a name for it, or just Robot Dog? They don't have a name for it. Well, they do Spot. have a name for it, but it's. it's I mean, oh, it's Spot. Spot. Okay, but yeah. I thought you were talking about like model number or something. But. Oh yeah, no, I just like. Anywho, so I was just saying, like, if we want to get one for the podcast, I think it'd be a good investment to get, and we can share it. We can we can split custody. Probably just need a few more Patreon backers for that, though. Just a couple. Owen will get it. He'll yeah. he'll install tomato on it, and then hey hey, all we have to get is one billionaire to really like our show. So you know how Jeff Bezos <laughs> saved the expanse, right? He could do it for a show. Yeah, you we just got we just gotta get one of those. We just Jeff gotta Bezos, gold dig a little bit. Je- you know Jeff what? Bezos heard the news and he's like, "Nah, I want more." I don't need. I'm gonna be honest. And, I don't even know what his voice sounds like. Yeah, it's I don't think like I've ever this. heard him talk. It sounds like really. Him. Yeah, yeah, sounds sure. like almost a trillion I dollars. I was going to say, I don't think it matters what your voice sounds like when you're worth $120 billion. No, no. It, I mean, it doesn't matter what your voice sounds like anyway, but I want to do an impression of him, but I just don't know what he sounds like. Like, as I know it's George not like Lucas sounds like. Oh. Just, just drop some money on the table there and that'll about cover it. <laughs> that sounds like his voice, I'm <laughs> yeah. sure. Yep. <laughs> mm. uh, was, what's that? What's that distant beeping in the background? Oh, it's his bucket. It's it's his dump truck full of buckets of money. Yeah, he's backing up. He's backing it up. That's just pocket change. He has to. He had to rent some trucks for his pocket change. So, man, that's that's a good Bezos question. Like, if you guys had Bezos money and he he saved the expanse, what would you guys buy and bring back? Like, I kind of want a second yeah, Jedi buy. Academy. <laughs> Angel like that game was so good. Angel? Imagine if we could. <laughs> that is that was really random, but I Angel. can't say that I disagree. I love yeah. that show. Uh. Hmm. I would hire all of the animators that made all of the cutscenes for uh, Knights of the Old Republic and have them just make a movie. Mm. If if I've learned anything from saved shows, um, sometimes you just don't want them back, aka right. Arrested Development. Well, and part of the problem too, Scrubs. Th- Part of the problem with that is you end up with not everyone can come back, or for whatever reason the chemistry's off. Like it was, like it's not how it was before. Because, I mean, take for example, if any of us were actually serious and we said anything other than Firefly, we would probably raise the ire of the entire geek internet world combined. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but I no, watch I don't think that everyone that participated in Firefly, well. I think I think the the uh, Reverend passed away a few years ago. Is he still alive? Yeah, uh, I think you're right. I think he is dead. So so he's he's not available. Um, no, nah, they're just gonna need to turn him into a computer AI. <laughs> there you go. Just digitally put him back in. Um, oh, you mean make him an AI on the ship? Mm-hmm. There you That's go. Right. There you go. Well, the other problem too is any show that uses uh, any show that has Summer Glau. Ends up getting canceled early. She's like a. <laughs> is she the one with like the umbrella? Cursed. Uh, no, she was the. Um, she was the girl in the show that the that the show kind of revolved around. Oh. Um, who's who's the who's the woman that was um, in Deadpool? Because she was also in it, wasn't she? No. The love interest in Deadpool. Are we talking about? Deadpool? Oh yes, yes, yes. You're right. You're right. Sorry, uh, Miranda Bakarin. Yeah, yeah. She was in both. That's a cool last name, Picard. Almost sounds like Picard. 
Yep. All right. So uh, we got some games to talk about. Or did you want to talk about uh, Segway thing first, Jaron? Oh, sure. We can we can uh, get this out pretty quick. Yeah. So the the inventor of the Segway, you know, the the thing that Job rode around on. Speaking of Arrested Development, Dean Kamen. He's he's a serial inventor. He uh, has many many patents. What and kinds of cereal? Maybe I've eaten some of it. Captain Come on, Crunch. On cookie mm. recipe. Oh. Yep. Yes. Mm. I've eaten both of those. So he has a new initiative going on, and uh, yeah, he wants to mass produce human organs. I mean, didn't I, I, su- I support musical? this if it's actually if it's actually doable? Just just imagine that factory. It would stink so bad. No, man, you keep it cold so that so that it doesn't go bad. Doesn't yeah, well, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm on board. Yeah. They use robots so that people don't complain. Exactly. That way your they're, organs aren't contaminated either. That's right. They're many, many years off still, but yeah. they have quite a bit of funding, hundreds of millions of dollars of funding. And uh, this guy, I I would place my bet on him. I think he could do it. Well, here's the thing about if you could if you could mass produce human organs based on the DNA of the people that need the organs, that's like one of the that's, holy grails of medical that's the, science. Yeah, that's the missing link, right? I mean that's that's where that's why everybody's afraid of cloning, right? Like because that's so tempting. Yeah, and there's just, been several. I've seen several movies that deal with that. Um, it's not a, it's not an uncommon trope in science fiction mm-hmm. for for good reason because it would definitely go corporate like that. You know, mm-hmm. you'd end up with people being cloned just to harvest their organs. But if That's you could right. do it without the cloning of the humans, uh, and just then it kind just of turns into repo man, minus the repo. Yeah, that's where, uh, right. <laughs> that was a crazy, Ooh. crazy movie, by the way. Yeah. Repo Man, a genetic rock, rock opera. It was yeah. bonkers. <laughs> now, they ha- scientists have uh, bioprinted a human heart before uh, in 2019, but making that cost effective. And I mean, who knows if it was actually an effective human heart. Right. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely within the realm of possibility, but it will probably take us some time to get there. But I, I thought it was a pretty cool story. Oh, it's definitely my, cool. My um, wife is currently uh, bioprinting a human heart <laughs> inside of a human uh, fetus. Yes. Also, uh, yes. Well, there you go. Yeah. But yeah, because the other thing that would be awesome about about uh, cloning an organ from tissue from the person that needs it is there would be no fear of rejection. Yeah. Right. Uh, so that's uh, organ the biggest rejection. Thing. You know, I won't know how to take those the Not, the the, the, the immunosuppressant drugs, drugs and everything. Those are those are those are almost as horrible as the disease you are getting away from just barely just barely not because you're still alive usually not as bad as the irs but almost right (laughs) it's like irs then death and then these things so organ cloning a question how long do you think after if something like this comes out how long do you think it'll be until because if you look at baseball there is a surgery that most uh pitchers get to make their arms more effective to yeah. fix that ligament, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. so my question is, how long do you think it'll be after something like this comes out until it becomes popular in sports or at least approved in sports to get certain organs, ligaments, things well, on your body, like either rejuvenated yeah. Uh, or, yeah. Well, think about it this way. If you could clone your heart and then genetically modify it to pump blood more efficiently and oxygenate your blood more efficient, efficiently, you would automatically have a leg up in any cardiovascular workout. Let me just uh, raise my heart rate real quick. And boop, the uber wealthy just bioprinting pretty much their whole body yeah, right, to that extend point. their life. Yeah. And that, what's, what's the difference between that and what uh, Lance Armstrong was doing? Doping. Because well, wasn't wasn't what he was doing was sucking out the blood and then putting in new blood that's more mm, oxygenated nah, or something nah, like nah, that? Nah, he, was, nah. he, was, so, he was inserted injecting more red blood cells to hold oxygen. Yeah, hold what, more the, oxygen. yeah. what you do is in the lead up before an event, you you give blood, except you keep the blood in a bag. Mm. And so your body naturally produces Repre- blood to replace the blood mm-hmm. that you took out. And then like, I don't know how long before whatever the competition is, but you put the blood you took out back into your body. So you have extra blood, which means extra oxygen to your muscles. Wouldn't that just like make you bloated? 
Well, uh, uh, I'm, Lance, sure, like, I'm sure there's a limit. <laughs> well, Lance, Lance Armstrong has a huge lung capacity, and so it was able to help him give him like 30 or there was, I read, I read a, the article and there was also a book published, but um, about, about that. Cause there was one investigator that just kept being like, yo guys, this can't be, I mean, he's good, but not that good. And, and, uh, and they, it, it talked about the percentage because of his lung capacity and, and putting that blood back in was able to, he was like 20 or something percent more oxygen in his system, oh, wow. uh, which, which is crazy. So, Anyways, it was it was that really good. It, that that uh, I think the the investigation, the one journalist that held on to it, it took like ten years or something. I mean, all the way through his cancer treatment, all the way through like Livestrong, all that stuff, and with with Lance like suing him for defamation, like all this stuff happened, and finally they were like, mm, "Your teammates flipped on you, and you, we know you've been doing it." Oh, so Ooh. well, yeah. that's it, you know. I mean, you, so you you cheat and you thought you were untouchable. And you get caught, yeah. But with the but with bioprinting this stuff, I imagine it would be like the ship of Theseus, you know, where they just like slowly just like yeah. hey, need a new need a new wrist uh, wrist bone here, just need to put this in, you know, or whatever. At what point are you a not completely the same person? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If, if you replace brains, I think that's the point where you're I, not the same person. Yeah, well, yeah. I, that's what I would say too. I mean, <laughs> unless someone unless someone invents a way to transfer all of your memories to the new brain, oh, and then I then I still don't feel like the the thought. Well, and then you get then like, you get yeah. Then you get into the question of what's what makes a soul. You know what makes mm-hmm. what makes a human a human. At that point, the, you're basically just moving data like you would from one hard drive to another. Oh man, and, like that then, show Upload. Did you guys watch Upload? Yeah, Upload oh, was crazy. Upload. I went in thinking it was up, and it turned out to be a completely different movie. Have you ever have you ever heard of the uh, analysis of how we could achieve like real life teleportation, a la Star Trek? Isn't it? Pretty much you are destroying every cell in your body and it's printing a new version of you wherever you teleport to. Well, that's just I, like the prestige. That was the exact way that the, the trick worked in the prestige. You with know? the exception of. Except you didn't destroy it. You just made, made a, copy. a copy. Yeah. And then he yeah. killed the other yeah. ones. Spoiler yeah. alert. Now, that so said, though, imagine <laughs> imagine being in going through a teleporter like I'm about to die. The, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then is that's, it actually you on the other end? You know, yeah. what is yeah. that? Well, you'll uh, never know because, you know, you're uh-huh. always just kind of just the modern version of you. I think it's that's the same the, thing I think about every now and then when I go to sleep. <laughs> that's the uh, that's basically the premise of that show upload. Um, the, the opening like the the opening episode has a huge shock in it when you watch it. And you're just like, oh, the, the, what? Pro- the process the, of being the, uploaded, the, the upload process <laughs> yeah. is a shock. <laughs> and it's essentially what Jaron just said. So, um, but it's it, a, it I, is I, crazy. That, that shows definitely um, it's it's got its adult moments uh, as yeah. far as language and stuff like that. But, man, it was a it was an interesting and funny and fascinating show. Seriously, I, I really enjoyed it. It's kind of like uh, you could, um, well, nah, never mind. I don't want to say anything else. I don't want to spoil anything. Yeah, you got to go uh, watch it. Yeah. Um, okay, let's, uh, speaking of, of uh, medical things, um, what's this uh, med bay action you have on here, Owen? Oh, man, some doctors decided to teach robots to sew human skin closed. I think well, that's, that's called it. stitching. Up. stitching. If you say stitching, it sounds a lot better than sew human <laughs> sorry, skin closed. Sorry, I'm, I've been playing Metro Exodus, and there's that whole segment of the game where they're just sewing human skin closed. <laughs> no, um, no, I think you're just getting closer to a robot every day, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, they, they, they have the crazy thing about the way they taught this AI was not actually they taught this AI how to stitch something and whatever, but to do the, to do the sutures. But the way they taught it, they used a, what's called a Siamese network uh, in the AI world. And that's where it compares two sets of data for differences to like learn how they're what the differences is between the two incoming data um facial recognition is one like that so like it sees a picture and it 
it digests those pixels that it sees and then it compares them to a database of pixels that it has on the other end and it goes do these match are they close what does this look like mm -hmm. and uh, so these these um, scientists are using this AI network to train a robot using YouTube videos of doctors actually suturing instead of like pictures and, and trying to upload the I can't remember all the other AI stuff but it's the depth of field and all this other thing that you have to put in when you just they just they just set it loose with 75 videos from YouTube and it watched them and it did comparisons and it's like within a 0.94 centimeter error rate on um, on accuracy right now and uh, and can basically stitch us do some sutures it's pretty crazy how they're but I, I imagine MedBay when they thought when I was like, oh, you just get in here and just get all sewn up and <laughs> all sewn up. Just uh, you know, the, and the, I mean, right now they're in the in the article. It's funny because the that's, the researchers. That's, that's the, not a cut. That's my lips. <laughs> <laughs> oh, AI malfunction. Sorry about that. <laughs> Tony the, or uh, Owen, the casualness of of you just entering into this conversation is disturbing in itself. You're just like, well. You take the human species, right? And then you apply so the sewing mm -hmm. to the openings on them. <laughs> it's fine. There's so many so many ways this could be used badly, I guess, now that uh, I'm thinking about it. But but the the researchers are like, yeah, we're not looking to do this so that the AI it's right now they right now the AI has to be assisted. Um semi assisted they call it. So basically mm -hmm. it still needs some interaction to be that accurate. Um but the idea is to remove this burden from the doctors when they because ai is that's what ai is really good at is taking menial tasks and you know automating them right and um and i was like there's no doctor right now that does the suturing like the main closing up anyway they just go yeah close them up whatever and they walk out of the room you know like yeah who's that's the every intern yeah every every doctor show i've watched does that so that's why i know it's true <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that, but <laughs> the internet does not lie, Tony. The TV only... would not lie to him. TV... If I saw it on television, it must be true. My window into social the social world would not lie. TV does not lie. <laughs> oh my goodness! I'm as bad as any internet AI bot out there. I can be easily corrupted to say horrible things, and I wouldn't even know. <laughs> They would just they would just have to shut me down. That's why we have you on the show. Yeah, oh, that's what mm. you do. Hmm. All right. Uh, very interesting. Um, quickly, uh, we we should note that AMD uh, announced new Ryzen or released kind of announced new Ryzen chips. Very slight. Very slight. Uh, spec bumps, basically. Of the, we're, we're talking a 4% boost over yeah. the same chip that was there a week ago. I'm not sure why they even bothered to do this, honestly. However, if there might be good sales on the previous chips. And yeah, so, so you might want to avail yourself of that. But uh, they are keeping the same price for the new chips as they had for the old chips, basically. So Yeah, it's the XT variant. Um, and so they're, I guess they did this so they could reclaim the single thread crown from Intel's latest that, that they just I, put they, out. They still don't, though. That's why I'm not sure why they bothered to do this because no, according to ours, it it it, it does in in most situations. Huh. But of course, Intel will always have its gaming advantage. <coughs> yeah, just just optimization, well, right, optimization like game optimization. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, because games have been written for Intel architecture for so long, right? That they the AMD architecture has to play catch up right now for for the developers. Plus, yeah. it just yeah it's. That's, and de and now now, you know. now now devs know what they're worth too. Like back when Intel started getting games optimized for it, you know, it's this mutual like this mutual agreement has been mutually beneficial. Intel got exposure, devs got their games to work better, so they got exposure. Now devs are like, why exactly should I optimize my game towards AMD? And especially what, well, what well, value do I get? Well, with the new consoles, Developers will be doing that anyway because they right. have the Uses Zen the 2 same, architecture. Yep, right. same chip architecture as exact same chip. So I, I think that. that pendulum is going to swing the other way pretty soon. I hope, I hope so. I hope it does honestly because it's uh, there's a lot of untapped potential on the AMD processors still for uh, for gaming. All right, uh, 
also can't can't uh, pass up a chance to dunk on Apple. I guess they're being douchey. Oh man, this this kind of enraged me. Uh, the story is there's a developer that, uh, called Basecamp. They released a new email app called Hey. Hey. And uh, hey. It, it went through the App Store review process. Apple approved it. And basically, App Store's um, the App Store rule is you have to use their in-app payment option unless unless the developer only has a sign-in page to the app and the developer handles all the payment stuff outside of the app without linking to anything within the app. Um, kind of a ridiculous rule, I think. Um, personally, I, I think that Apple should allow third-party payment systems, um, but if a developer chooses to, to use Apple's, then Apple should promote that specific app within the App Store. Um, that, that's how I think it should go. But anyway, mm-hmm. so Basecamp, they followed the rules. They did everything to the letter. Um, and they released a minor uh, re- uh, version 0.01 update like a week later just to fix some bugs, you know. And then Apple said, wait, you're not following our rules. We're not going to let you release this bug fix. And uh, what Apple wants them to do is forego their whole payment system and use app. They're trying to Apple's trying to force them to use Apple's in-app payment so Ooh, Apple can get they, their third, third thirty percent cut. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's exactly why. So Apple says basically, if you don't want to use our system, that's fine. But you have to handle all the risk, right? Because right now, Apple has some risk management, right? Like if somebody spends or a kid buys like a thousand bucks worth of microtransactions, I, I, Apple will roll those back. They have some control there. Yeah, and a- Apple's system is a nice system if the developer doesn't want to, you know, go through the trouble of you know, spinning up their own payment system. 30% um, a big chunk though. Yeah, yeah, Apple's, is, really Apple's chunk. Is, is a good system. And after a year, it, that 30% goes down to 15%. But if you're a developer, you should have the choice. And, oh, 100%. And Apple's rules, Apple's not even obeying their own rules that they set out here. And they're making up new rules on the spot just yeah. because just because they want this developer to pay 30% to Apple. Because and it must be something good. I was going to say, is are they afraid of this app? Is it is it that much better than what no, they have going on? No, or anything? no. It's like a pretty much a business to business app. It, who I mean, who who out there is going to pay a hundred dollars a year for email? Not many people. So it's a hundred dollars a year. Yeah, it's not for people like us who oh, who yeah. like Gmail. You know, but no. there there is there is a is market like, for that. Did right. you say it's like ultra secure or something? Um, I, I haven't really looked into it because you know I, I don't really care about mm. that sort of thing for myself. But I mean, Apple's totally in the wrong here, and yeah. I, I'm glad that a bunch of outlets are calling Apple on their crap. And it's it's a it's a bad look for Apple, for sure. I mean, it's it's just it's really stupid what they're doing. And there's yeah. nothing but people at home on Twitter to talk about it, so they better watch their p's and q's. <laughs> that's right. Otherwise, otherwise the Coliseum of Twitter will turn against them. <laughs> that's right. The Coliseum. Well, that's well what, what will happen though is they're under antitrust investigation i think in the eu and the us is i don't think mm-hmm. they've done too much yet but i mean there's been some rumblings um but if any th- this would this is a major red flag i think and i don't think it'll help with their antitrust investigation at all no if, definitely not on the apple side of things definitely not um in other news uh, related to mobile things uh t-mobile if you're a T-Mobile customer, you had an outage uh, mm-hmm. in the last week, lasted about a day or so. That's huge. And it was that is uh, huge. It, it, yeah, it, it was basically text and voice calls were very, very uh, sketchy if they worked at all. And they finally this- they released a root cause of why it went down for a day, and it's because one of their fiber circuits took a dump. And then their backup fiber circuit also took a dump. <laughs> I knew we should. Re- I knew we should replace that. Like their backup was probably the old one, you know. And they're like, probably, we'll, just, yeah. we'll put the new one in and keep this one as a backup. <laughs> and so it failed, which meant everything that ran through those fiber circuits had to be distributed through the other parts of their network, which was not robust enough which to handle the load. Cru- it, just it just crushed them. Yep, it just crumbled. And that's why sometimes stuff would go through and other times it wouldn't. And sometimes it would break up and things like that. So they finally got it fixed, though, about a day later. Um, but it's 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 just kind of, it's interesting. Um, 
you they know, had some very some sysadmins and some network engineers had a really oh a terrible really bad terrible bad day thirty six hours. Mm-hmm. It was it was so bad that one of the most worthless human beings on earth, Ajit Pai, even he was <laughs> alarmed by it. And he was like, "I want to pick on somebody." <laughs> hey, wait, hold a on. Let, let me sit down my Reese's peanut butter cup and actually do something. Like, Turn off one, my cartoons for for one whole day and a half. I did not have the most punchable face. I, I have the hardest time talking through my my indentures. <laughs> yeah, stupid face. It's, it's like you know when your Wi-Fi goes down at your house. Think about that, but everywhere you go with your phone. Oh, can you imagine in this world of two factor? Yeah, in this, in this world of two factor authentication, when data because it wasn't like it was it just their voice and text. Their data just, was fine. From what I read, it was just voice and text. So like, so all these SMS people that use you know SMS for two factor authentication, like no good, no good. Just good luck. Sorry about that. Hope you don't need to text your text your your significant other or any of your kids anything important. Yep. That's not going through. I mean, I rely exclusively on like messaging and stuff for my son's diabetes for like the apps we have on the phone and stuff. Like, yeah. it's, that would have been that would have been crazy for us. Yep. And that's when yeah. Apple's like, Haha, if you use iMessage, it doesn't affect us. That's just straight data. They run through their own servers. Right. Yep. We're Apple. So, all right, we're. Uh, yeah, James, we're Apple. <laughs> All I was right. going to do an Apple impression, but I don't know what they sound like. We're Apple. I mean, I think you nailed Silicon it. Silicon Valley. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> probably accurate. Probably nailed it there. Yep. Uh, all right. Uh, now we got, uh, let's, let's move on to some game stuff. We got, we got a good amount of game news going on here. Let's start with, uh, this, uh, this is interesting. The FDA has actually approved a video game for treatment of something. Yeah, you mm. can actually be. So this is the first time that you can actually be medically prescribed a video game to play. And uh, this was actually really cool. So I, my, my son has been diagnosed with ADHD. Um, and so they, I was really interested. That's how I kind of got clued into this, this article. But um, they... Normally, this type of thing is like, oh, some researchers in some small place, Tower. some somewhere thought that this would be cool. You know, the whole the, it's the same debate of like video game violence. Like right. there's there's always enough on either side to prove that it is or isn't beneficial or addictive or whatever. Well, <clears throat> this one, actually, they did it. This this study, they've done a study with this one for seven years. Uh, this Jeez. study has been going on 600 patients. Uh, 600, 600 kids. Um, so what you're s- saying is it's been thorough. It's yeah. So it's actually, it's actually got some, some good scientific backing behind it. And they said that for, for, if you, uh, it's not, it's not great <laughs> graphically. Like a lot of the, like some of the games we, we talk about, it's not super graphically great, but, but, uh, this game, if you play, they said, let's see here. It says, if you play, uh, 25 minutes a day, five days a week for four weeks, they saw Tony Hawk Pro Skater. <clears throat> they said they saw a marked improvement um, for that was maintained for up to one month. Hmm. So, like you, you were prescribed this, and now the only only problem is it only worked for about thirty three percent of the cases. So oh. one one third of that one third of the kids um, had that had that result where they had no 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 measurable. This is what it says: no longer had a measurable attention deficit on at least one measure of objective attention, whatever that is. I don't know what that. That's some doctor speak there, but <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, twenty five minutes a day, five days a week for four weeks, and uh, you can be you can be prescribed this game now. And I haven't yet, but I'm gonna go see if I can find it. So maybe it took them so long to put publish this because they were addicted to the game. Maybe that was like, wait, or what they were we doing? ADD. They were the yeah, other. yeah, right. They were like, wait, weren't we supposed to be doing something? No, nope. I don't remember. I let's talk about notes. Let's talk about what right. the best Russell Crowe film is. Gladiator. That's a, Gladiator. That's actually what happened. Actually, let's talk about that in a minute. That Gladiator. happened with uh, Tetris back when Tetris was being developed. I can't remember the name of the developer. His name escapes me, but he got the game basically 80% done and then just played it for days and days and days <laughs> forgot about it and 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 didn't do any more work on it until he finally realized wait a minute i need to finish this <laughs> i was doing something yeah I exactly remember. tetris is fun 
but that's when you know you're on to something when like you're playing it and yeah. you can't stop for sure so so uh, these guys are normal. called uh these guys are called endeavor rx is the studio and uh and the they said they they haven't rolled it out quite yet um op- open up they're not so that they hasn't been people haven't been rolled so um they're waiting for the looks like COVID-19 is kind of affecting the rollout. Um, but yeah, you, there's a wait list you can join. I'll put that link in the, in the show notes, but there's a wait list you can join to get uh, into the game to, to get it. That's cool. So, yeah. We're going to try, we're going to try it out. I, I don't know. Like, I think one of the draws to video games for kids is that it's not required. You know, it's not homework. So, <laughs> I don't want to so, play game, uh, video games wait, right now, like, Go sit down and play your ADHD game right now. Uh, Go play your... Just, can I just read? Just take your just take your medicine. No, you know you can't read. <laughs> <laughs> you literally you can't oh, read because you can't you concentrate on it. <laughs> you had a different yeah. childhood than I did, bud. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> oh, oh anyway. all right. Very cool. Very cool. Interesting uh, developments there mm-hmm. in uh, medical usage of video games uh ps5 was trotted out in front of the masses last week Mm -hmm. very interesting they they took about an hour and a half to show um probably what like 20 25 games so what uh, what did you think overall of the keynote and then and and then they and then they showed off what the console actually looks like uh overall i thought it was pretty good i felt like the cool looking transitions that they did in between trailers took too long um well, they gotta pat it yeah but why it was already an hour and a half <laughs> they could have t- they could have cut those down and it would have been an hour and 15 minutes but uh anyway i, um, I thought some of what they showed was great a yeah. lot of what they showed was not great i would and... say i would say half of what they showed made me go "Ooh, i'm interested in that and then about yeah, half but... of it half of it was like meh I, I wanted to see what the PS5 could do, and we got a little bit of that. Let's be but... honest. You wanted to see Uncharted, and they didn't show Uncharted, <laughs> and that made you sad. <laughs> What's Beyond this? that, I, I wanted to see what the PS5 could do, and they did a really good job with that in Ratchet and Clank. Um, and Well, cause mainly because that's the only game they showed the gameplay of, but the rest of it, it was just trailers, and you can't yeah. really tell a game's graphics by the trailers, and to me, that was extremely disappointing. Well, it's funny because... Xbox, Microsoft kind of made the same error in their presentation a month ago, and they got railed on by most of the video game outlets for it. Yeah. So and Sony did people a seem slightly to be, better job. Yeah, Sony did a slightly better job, just enough so that uh, it seems like game game uh, gaming outlets are giving them a pass on it. Yeah. Nobody's really complaining that, that uh, there was like two games that had gameplay, uh, or maybe three, but... Uh, and and the design of it, man, ugly. See, I'm down with the design. I think it's cool. With that cool, what they call that scoop? What do they call, no that, do they call like, that scoop? They call it the some valley or something. It looks like it, a router from ten years ago. A vertical router with a binder on both sides. It looks <laughs> like ring a, <laughs> dude. It looks like a it looks like a, a diner, like a frontage of a diner off of like Route 66. The it's, Jetsons is bad, and You're, they have yeah. two versions. They have a disc version and a digital version. The digital version actually looks it, it's okay to me. The disc version it looks better. It looks like a tumor. It does. It looks like they just kind of slapped it on the side. Yeah, they bolted it on there and said, "Oh, we got to make the plastic bigger." Uh, oh crap! Mm-hmm. And the uh, thing is it gigantic. Out. It's the biggest console ever made. It looks huge, according to what people have posted online with comparisons based on things like the disk drive because disk drives are the same size on 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 every piece of hardware you know the, sl- the slots besides that well the slot the game you <laughs> didn't have a disk drive it was a it was a lid um but yeah, yeah. mini discs yeah but yeah discs. so you can come you can use that to compare it to the how big the rest of the console is and it it's a big boy i mean i would I think it's bigger than the original Xbox, and that thing yeah, was a tank. Yeah, it is. I mean, ultimately, I don't, I don't care what it looks like because it's going to be shoved away in my cabinet. Yeah. yeah so, a, a, assuming it fits, I, I don't know if it's going to fit. <laughs> so, and so here's that's a, that's, a, that's a legitimate concern that I have. Well, see, I actually like that because you know, there's been this drive over the years to shrink, to shrink and improve performance, shrink and improve performance, and so when I see them actually go with bigger size, I go, okay, so this is what they can do with something the size of my palm 
what if they have something like the reason the Xbox, the original Xbox is so big is because it had to be right. Like yeah. they didn't have the option to have it be smaller. So now I'm like, well, now they have the option to be way smaller, but they made it way bigger. What did they what what's in there that's making it, you know, I justify that size? My, my theory is I think it's so big for good cooling. It, yeah, has, cooling I, fans, I guarantee. Yeah. it has fans yep. running down the top all the way to the bottom. And it's probably spacious inside for good airflow. Yeah, I, I'm almost 100 percent positive. That's why that's why it's so big. And I actually like that it's huge for that reason because right. now I actually maybe believe their their nonsense about having a GPU frequency of like 2.1 gigahertz yeah. consistently. I, Right. I, th- I think though Microsoft over out engineered them. Oh it's, yeah, for sure. It's definitely smaller, and I think it looks better. I mean, it's basically it, a PC, and they engineered it that way, and so I, I think it's an authentic design. Whereas this is just unnecessary plastic coming off the top. It looks like a collar that's been puffed out, like a preppy boy. Yeah. It looks like. Do you guys remember what the old PS3 controllers looked like before the redesign? PS3. Yeah, they basically yeah. look like the PS2 controllers. No, PS4, oh, are you, sorry. Are Wait, you we're, on the, we're, we're on, on the PS3. PS5. Okay, yeah, yeah, the, the PS4. Isn't the Isn't it, wasn't the PS4 the one that had the boomerang? Looking? No, that was PS3, the, yeah. the that, battering okay, good. controllers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like whoever oh, designed that um, got rehired for this, and they didn't say <laughs> no to him this time. Because I, I actually really agree with Jaren. I think it, it, it looks like they were going for something, but did not they're, succeed they're and going for something that'll look like modern art on your on your tv stand <laughs> who wants modern art though besides like i don't know the one percenters yeah the net the the xbox yeah. uh the new one kind of looks like if uh next was allowed to like evolve into like more than just one computer yeah the uh and i would say that the xbox cooling wise uh, okay, and this is speculation, but I would say cooling wise, it's much better engineered than the PS5. For sure. Because right. you have that that really big fan on the top that pulls air through the entire box from the bottom up. And it just, it looks, cause it, the D- Digital Foundry has that uh, video where they went to Redmond and got to actually tear apart an Xbox uh, Series X and put it back together and see how it fits in that. In that uh, how they do it. In that, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Obelisk. In that yeah. obelisk. But uh, I don't know. I, th- I think the PS5, honestly, I think it's kind of cool looking. Um, and uh, more importantly, they showed off a couple of games that got me really excited. Uh, Horizon. The number, number one yes. for sure is Horizon. Horizon Forbidden West oh, looks uh, so looked good. amazing. And yeah. we have a link to the YouTube, the latest YouTube video from Gorilla games who who uh are the developers for that game it's about a four minute long video definitely worth a watch and if you like the first horizon game i think this is just going to take everything that was awesome about it and bigger better faster and they, and they said it's going to take place in utah Woo! yeah they said it's going to the, the setting of it is going to be from utah to the pacific ocean i found yeah. that utah has been kind of a popular it has game setting i mean it was in yeah. last of us the first one i mean we got we got two games based in utah now it's it's awesome based remember, in utah was like 15 minutes in the end of the last of us <laughs> shush, 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 tony shush, shush, shush. nobody needs to know so that it was basically the entire game the entire time i remember i woke up because remember the first time you actually see that it's in salt lake spoiler alert you go through a hospital yeah and uh I, it was three o'clock hospital. in the morning i thought we were wrapping up on the game and so i'm like tired and i know i got to get up at like six and my eyes are kind of just worn out from like after like sneaking quite a bit because i suck at sneaking and all of a sudden there's a giraffe that just pops its head up and I see the temple in the background. I'm like, there's no way. There is <laughs> you no must have been way. on drugs. <laughs> oh, nope. it felt it was like a I real was on deal. Drugs. Holy moly. Yeah, that was that was weird. So they showed off a couple of uh a couple of new games that I thought looked really interesting as well. Um the one that, that really has my interest peaked is uh a, a Capcom game um called Street Fighter? No, what was the name of that? Resident Cap- Evil Village? No, no, no. That looked really cool too cuz I love Resident Capcom. Evil games, but there was one How is it? It's not on this list that you uh that Are you, you sure it's Capcom? To. Yeah, cuz it uses the RE engine. It's the one that uh Alex Oh, the one in the city. 
Yeah, the one in the city with the with the astronaut and the little girl. Pragmata. Yeah. Pragmata. Yeah. I googled that, that. I don't even know what the heck's going on there, but I am very intrigued. It, yeah, it the looks really with, weird. The problem with that is it's at least two to three years out. Oh yeah, it's a it's a ways oh, out for sure. Um, that the hair didn't did not look good in that trailer. I'm sorry. It's two to three years <laughs> out, but you're right. <laughs> I mean, everything else looked great, but the hair looked like crap. The little girl's hair looked all old like yeah. not not old hair but like old style of rendering hair yeah um but uh it uses the re engine and it uses ray tracing uh for reflections and things like that and i thought it looked i thought it looked pretty interesting the resident evil 8 uh the village or whatever i'm always down for new resident evil game so are you I'm, a big fan of those kind of games oh yeah i love i love the resident evil games um but Here's the other thing is I think they showed off a lot of these games first looks on this uh, in this uh, press conference mm. and over half of them are going to be on Xbox and PC probably yeah. two thirds or more. The, the game yeah. that I thought um, showed off the power of the console the best is Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, that it, looked really, really good. So the, the main gimmick in, in that and I'm kind of afraid it might just be a gimmick. Um, rather than adding to the actual gameplay, but I guess we'll see until the game comes out. But you, it, you teleport through these portals, and the trailer showed, it, it was super cool, Ratchet um, teleporting through these portals, loading up into a whole different world instantly. They, they said that the game was running in real time on you know on, on the console, and that, that really spoke to the speed of the SSD, what it's capable of, lo- loading in assets pretty much immediately. And yeah. they had ray, trace, ray tracing as well, once it got into actual gameplay, the, the teleporters was actually, it seemed more like in-level type of stuff. So you can teleport to a different part of the level, maybe well, it, like 100 it didn't feet, even It didn't even feel like teleporting, if you ask me. It felt more like a, a, a sci-fi version of a hook shot from yeah, Zelda. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Graphics were really clear, crisp, ray tracing looked great. And so I, I think that really showed off what, what it could do, and, and it looked pretty good. So the big question is, which one are y'all actually going to get one? Oh, I'm getting one for sure because they showed off the new Horizon game. And I also neglected to mention uh, they also showed off a new Spider-Man Miles Morales game. Dude. I'm in 100%. That one seems like it might be the only one, only major game that's going to be out for launch. Yeah, that one's supposed to be at launch. Horizon, uh, in the interview on YouTube, the little four-minute one where they showed it off, they said it's going to be 2021. So it'll be next year, not not at launch uh, this year. I will buy the PlayStation 5 when Horizon Forbidden West comes out for sure. Um, probably won't buy it before that. I'm not going to get an Xbox because I have a gaming PC and Microsoft always releases their stuff on PC now as well. Um, if I didn't have a game gaming PC and, and I were to choose one, I would probably choose the Xbox. Mm. Yeah, that, that sounds pretty accurate. Um, we also got to hit on briefly the uh, Gran Turismo video was really purdy if you like the Gran Turismo games I personally don't care for those very much um, I'm not much of a driving sim kind of a guy to me the Gran Turismo games are just like a, a tech demo like to show yeah. off what PlayStation hardware can do but as but, far as driving simulators they are supposed to be super accurate and super you know realistic as far as the driving games as far as how the driving feels but uh it it was pretty man. It was pretty. So I and thought the, there was a racing game that you were into. Um, I forget what it was called. Wasn't it? No, I like I saw Forza Horizon. Computer. Yeah, Forza yeah, Horizon is is pretty cool. I like that one. Does that one just have a better story or what? No, it's it's just a different style of racing. It's more arcadey. It's not like super hardcore simulation define, of real life. Yeah, define right racing sim. So you say it's like more realistic right yeah because so, i love because yeah. like gran turismo is my racing that's the racing game of my choice like is the one that like i get through i get money i upgrade my car to go faster i try and tune it to like the coolest it can get oh so you can do all of that in the forza games too oh, um, cool. uh, the only difference is that when you race in the forza uh horizon games it feels more kind of more arcadey there's more drifting more jumps you know, stuff yeah. like that. Whereas Gran Turismo is just super realistic. You know, it. I remember this must have been two two generations ago. Uh, an, it, I saw an interview with a a uh, professional race car driver, and someone had from Sony had 
built a sim, a racing sim cockpit to play Gran Turismo. And he got in and raced a track that he's very familiar with, with the same kind of car that he races normally. And he said, as far as the uh, physics and everything go, it was almost, it was almost perfect. He said, That's cool. aside, aside from like the lack of inertia from turning and stuff like that, it felt it, to him, it was just like racing in real life. So that's kind of Gran Turismo's claim to fame is being as realistic as possible, both graphically and gameplay wise. Three more games that, that you know. oh, sorry, go ahead, James. No, 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 go, go. I was just going to say three more games that interested me. Uh, one was Project Athia. They didn't show too much. This is a Square Enix game, the same team that does Final Fantasy 15, I think. Yeah, and the problem with that is anything that Square Enix puts out that's Project something something. It's a long way out. It's either a super long way out or just gets mothballed at some point. It, it looks super it cool, though. It really cool. Yeah. Just, just the game, the, what I thought the gameplay was anyway, because we don't know for sure. And the graphics, the setting, it just looked really cool. Yeah. Um, and then two games that pretty much that seem to have the exact same mechanic, <laughs> kind of like Edge of Tomorrow, um, Returnal and Deathloop. Yes, Deathloop, I thought especially looked really cool. And Deathloop is not an exclusive, so you can get it on other platforms. Um, but Deathloop, it's the same developers that made, um, oh, what's that game called? Dishonored and Dis- Prey. Yeah, Dishonored. Um <laughs> It, it the the design of it looked super cool. The gameplay looked fun. Um, it didn't really show off, I guess, the graphics of what PS5 could do very well. But other than that, it it looked really cool. Well, and those and that Arcane Studio, it's not really known for making hyper realistic graphics. They always right. have a much more stylized yeah. take on their video games. So that's and then normal. The the other game, Returnal, uh, it was pretty much just a trailer, but the concept intrigued me. It's made by Housemark. The same people that did Razogun. So a, it's kind of a different what type a different, of game for them. Yeah. I mean, Razogun and this look, uh, they're totally, they're opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And it, it seemed, it was very sci-fi-y. It's this yeah. uh, woman, astronaut woman who's on this different planet and her life just keeps repeating over and over and over again. It, it, it looked cool. I'm, I'm excited for that one. I agree. I like the name too. I, I think that's a really cool made up word. Yeah. Returnal combination of return and eternal. Yep. Cool and then stuff. J- Joe Reedy's favorite Demon Souls remake. Yep. If you're into those kinds of games, that's probably going to be really awesome. Um, especially since it's uh, Blue Point. Blue Point ah. Studios is doing that remake, and oh, so that's really cool. they they know what they're doing. They they take uh, they're the same ones that did. Um, what was that other so, one they did uh, for, on the PS4? Uh, the Last Col- Colossus. Last Colossus. Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah. That's Wait, they did go. Shadow of the Colossus? They did the remake for PS4, and it's gorgeous. Oh, I, I, yeah. I played so that, that is a That's a game back in the day I had a subscription to GameSpots magazine, and I remember Got a that's demo the one game it. I just never played. Yeah. Like, I, uh-huh. I always wanted to play it, but I never played it. So Demon's Souls warranted a, re, a remake there on the PS5, but not Uncharted. Hey, they already remade Uncharted, dude. <laughs> uh, I just, Bite me. I just... I'm just I'm just really catching up to the the <laughs> sick burn from Joe Reedy earlier, and so. Oh, and let's anyway. not forget Stray, a cat game. Okay, now That's I don't know. Awesome. What to, nobody knows what to think about this game, but I I think the world in which this cat walks around is it's fascinating. Beautiful. Yes. It's beautiful. The art style is awesome. The uh, the ray tracing on the reflections looks really good, and the cat. Even though it's kind of an artistic take on a cat, it looks really good. Um, and we have no this. idea how what the gameplay is like because it was just it's, a trailer. It's no clue straight. whatsoever. It says yeah. that I'm just looking it up. It says pl- let's let you play as a cat as a stray cat solving mysteries in a futuristic world. I'm there. I'm totally there. <laughs> I mean, it what looks a world like we live in. in what a in, world! <laughs> in one of the scenes, there's two robots talking to each other, and one of them he looks like he has an Apple IIe for a head. <laughs> and uh oh, and man. he's just sitting there not not an apple IIe. uh it was the 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 first apple owned one they had that had a color screen it was small you're not talking about the lisa are you no no, no that's no, no, apple II. no uh because i think the apple IIe was still a is green that just the screen apple, is that just the regular macintosh that you're talking about i can't remember i i suck at that but uh anyway yeah the art style and everything it looked really cool who knows what it is actually when you play it, but it sure Mac looks two. neat. I'd Ma- say the, version. The, the Mac 2, Macintosh 2. Yeah, that, I think that's right. The Mac that's 2. The first, that's the first one that had color. Yeah. Oh, and we can't forget that uh, 
We're getting a Grand Theft Auto game on PS5. Yep. Grand Theft Auto sure 5 is. Uh, again. <laughs> looks exactly did you the, the same. Did, did you see the <laughs> meme of, uh, of uh, you know that teddy bear that does like the out of the side of his eyes kind mm-hmm. of look, right? Yeah. It's like uh, Bethesda, right? before announcing Skyrim's going to be on <laughs> on uh, the PS5 <laughs> cuz I saw know, I saw another meme that had uh it it showed like a list of all the games that Rockstar made for PS2 and PS3 Oh yeah yeah and it had like you had Grand Theft Auto 3, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, Grand Theft Auto Vice City um oh, yeah Grand yeah. Theft Auto 4 on the uh all on the PS2 and the PS3. It said like two generations and four games. And this this one says three generations and one game. Because <laughs> <laughs> GTA 5 has been on the PS3. Just all Xbox, of them. On, on the PS4 and now on the PS5. Yeah. You so. can. It's it's kind of funny. I saw the exact same thing. It's like uh, eight, seven years and eight years. It's like seven years and it shows all the games that they make. And then eight years and it's like two yeah something like cash that cow. Yeah. cash cow well Don't that's what it, it's it's obvious to see that rockstar is is tr- is transitioning away from a single player uh game studio to a an online uh service games as a service well, studio uh, and it's kind of a shame i just hope that me. they're optimizing the time right now you know what i mean like they've had um seven years of grand theft auto 5 so i'm really hoping that in the next grand theft auto like they're taking advantage of this time, you know what I mean, and just making that much bigger of a game of a map. I hope so. Because up up until that point, Grand Theft Auto had the biggest open world map, didn't they? Uh, when it came out, it was pretty close, if not the biggest. I'm trying to think of a game that has a bigger map than that right now, a single player game. I'm, I'm right, right now. I know I'm um, coming up short on that. On that, I think isn't Breath of the Wild's map bigger? It might be because that one is huge. But I'm pretty sure Skyrim's is. No, Skyrim came out before, and I don't think it was. Yeah, it was bigger than Skyrim. Yeah. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I think Breath of the Wild was the first game to beat it, if I'm not mistaken. But then again, there are a lot of games. I'd, that I'd I don't agree with you on that. that open world. So cool. I'm excited for the PS5 stuff. I uh, I really liked a lot of the stuff I saw. I would like to come over and touch yours when you buy it. I will allow that. Yes. I guess. Yes. Um, <laughs> and uh, I think we're going to wrap it up now with James's Gameses. All right, guys. James's Gameses is brought to you gonna, by James. I'm going to say, qui- say her quietly this time. <laughs> no, I like it when no. you engage. No as, one. As you no. interrupt him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm just letting you know right now, expect no sad endings from me today. Oh, All those sad endings ones, have been bud. so good. Mm-mm, I won't do so it again. So what, what bad things happened in your life when you were six? Uh, no, actually, this is the time of healing. This is when my mom and I uh, ended up back in uh, Utah. And she uh, went back to college at the age of 56. Wow, good for her. Yeah, and uh, got her degree at 58, her four-year degree in two years. Because she wow. listened to that. That's pretty cool. And that's also kind of in part uh, the reason why I have the, um, what do they call that? Uh, Nick at Night lineup memorized. Which, by the way, is uh, I Dream of Jeannie, Bewitched, I Love Lucy, the Lucy Desi Comedy Hour, uh, Drag Dick Van Dyke, Dragnet. And then if I uh, was up after that and uh, turned into a teenager or pre-teenager, I turned on Howard Stern. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> my mom doesn't listen to this so um <laughs> also you're 32 years old <laughs> I thought he was oh there's that. a lot of stuff my mom doesn't know about um <laughs> oh, she's in know. her 80s now and i don't need she doesn't to need to know yeah, yeah i was fine. gonna say and i'm a man but i'm not she just doesn't need to know <laughs> okay um we're on 93 and again so what i've been doing just to catch you all up if this is your first episode in the last six episodes that i've been doing it uh, i have uh, grabbed at least the top five games uh since the year i was born and have ranked them now i didn't necessarily play them in these years but they are games that came out in the respective years that i love and have in some way shape or form influenced my life so 93 <clears throat> doom oh good game original doom i would sneak play this game 
on my babysitter's computer because we didn't have a computer because my mom was in college and uh, I would I would play it. Got anything yeah. to say to that, Owen? Mm-hmm. Nope. <laughs> I nope. played the shareware version. I so did great. too. So good. I'm still I'm currently playing through that game on my Switch right now. I couldn't. I, I, I had <laughs> had so much fun when I found out I could reskin everybody with Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> and then and then you could reskin everybody with the uh, with the uh, girls in bikinis and it just went downhill from there with you Ooh, you could reskin is... them to be that I... woke something up in owen right there mm, just saying i actually showed my five-year-old son the original doom a couple days ago nice. and it was not a good idea oh <laughs> he's like he loved wow it. that that gun blows up the demons <laughs> Can I have a gun? Mm-hmm. No, Uh-oh. no, you cannot. No. What have I? What have I done? <laughs> and at demons, that point, Dad? I turned it off. <laughs> that gun blows up the demons. <laughs> the demons come out of uh, out of the uh, the demons come out of my closet at night. Wait, what? What you say? Maybe can, you do need a gun. Can I have a gun? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, moving on. After Doom, we got Mist, the original Mist. Oh, I loved Mist. Never got I, is that ninety three. Yeah, 93 is when it first came out. What? I kind of equate that to um, the reason why I love Escape Room so much. The only person in this group that's actually seen me react to an Escape Room is Tony. And I'll tell you what, Tony, that's how I react to Escape Rooms 100% of the time. Sounds about right. I, I literally skip around and just, you know, we're so good at this. There's right. a there's a War Stories that Ars Technica produces about Mist. It's very interesting. You guys should check it out on YouTube. Did you, you ever play Riven, James? That was a sequel. That wasn't sounds it? so that familiar. That was a sequel. Yeah. Was that the? I don't think I played that one because the only thing that kind of now I'm thinking about it is the Mist Three Exile, because I'm I never pretty that sure. Because that, that was the third one. Yeah, the majority of these games. <laughs> Good job, I, Tony. That were on the uh, pats on head. <laughs> the 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 majority of these that are on the computer well all of them that i played on the computer i played when i was like six at my babysitter's house so like because we didn't have a computer there was a jump in generations mm-hmm. um between me and playing it but um yeah i so i mean i wouldn't doubt if i did but and also there's a bunch of like um typing games that i wasn't able to find where it's like open door like it almost looked like c command prompts yeah, you would have to type yeah, text, the, text-based games. Yeah, there's one Zork. set in space that I tried to find, but is it I Zork? Know. I think it's called Zork. Is that really what it's called? I might, I might have to go look that up after this and like revise this list. But um, after Mist, because this this year only has four, um, is Kirby Adventure on Nintendo. Never Kirby's, played that one. Oh yeah, Kirby's Adventure on Nintendo. That was a good yep. one. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that I inherited that game uh, a couple years later. And then last but not least, Jurassic Park on Nintendo. What a great game. Which side note? On the NES or the Super Nintendo? Uh, I have the NES here. Oh, wow. I never. I remember playing it at at, uh, my friend's house on the Super Nintendo, but not on the regular Nintendo. They released games on the Nintendo for quite a while. There's a big overlap. I do remember that. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't play this one. I played the one for Super NES. Okay. Cool. Mm. Well, I get it. You came for a higher financial income household. We had two Super Nintendo. My mom <laughs> started over that year, Owen. Okay. We started over from scratch. We lost everything. We had a boat. We had a motor home, and guess what? He took it. He took everything. Okay? We had it, two Super do you feel, Nintendos. Do you feel better, Owen? Yeah. We had we had two Super Nintendos, and that's all I'm going to say. I and had he had no a father. Siblings. And a dad. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, dang. <laughs> Stuck around, right? You like almost made it. You almost he, made it, Owen. <laughs> when, when your James, dad I, feel said, like I've been, I feel like I was forced to do that. <laughs> when your dad said, hey, I'm just going to go to the grocery store. I'll be right back. Your dad actually meant it. My dad used it as a, you know, he just, psych. Hmm. On the NES, I'm gonna, you know, jumping right back to James's game design. I'm gonna put on <laughs> NES for that for that game. There we go. Just so, yeah. just to make sure we know it's not, not on the, it's not, it wasn't, it wasn't on one of the two Super Nintendos no. I had. It wasn't See, James, on the James, Superior. You, you forget that Owen's a sociopath. It it only hurts for a moment, then I just I, turn it off. I'm just curious like a, the amount like of dead animals in your backyard, Owen. Three. <laughs> I genuinely I got, was not ready for an answer to that question. Well, you know? Oddly specific. 
They he, got all caught, he got caught after that third one, so he yeah. had to stop. Started to escalate. <laughs> started to escalate. All of a sudden, you started eyeballing the back of your hit. Oh, my gosh. Don't look at me like that. That looks so weird. Okay. There it is. <laughs> that that right all there right. is your mugshot for the front of the future Netflix documentary, in, of which you will be the subject matter. Awesome. Just, just make sure that Owen has a use for you. That way you will stick around. Uh, yeah, wearing me as a jacket will be the use for him. <laughs> you look super comfortable, James. Extra. Not, not the right kind Extra. of use I was thinking of. Yeah. You make a Skin great backpack. Really soft. <laughs> looks supple. Super some... soft. It, it puts the lotion in the <laughs> basket. Or it gets I the hose that. again. I need new seat covers in my convertible. Mm, oh, geez. and on that note, uh, I think we'll wrap it up for the week. <laughs> well, now yeah. I'm creeped out. Beautiful. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening. Thanks for making it this far. If you did, thanks for the download. And uh, we will see you guys. Ne- or I guess you'll hear from us. So we don't actually see you next week on the next episode. Owen, take us out. Hey, we hope you care. Gadget spot.